Why won't you bloody work? Ah, oh, the cable's unplugged. Useless. This is the standard LEGO 9V power controller. It's sturdy and solid, but it needs two cables to make it work, and that's too, too many. This is a really cheap infrared remote. It actually came from a car stereo that I used to own and never used. There's the infrared LED on the top, and this is the infrared sensor, which I also ripped out of that stereo. You can buy these at any electronics store. All I've done is soldered on three pins so that it can connect to the Arduino. Those three pins go to three wires. A 5 volt wire, a ground wire and one of the analog inputs. From there you just need to press buttons on the remote. Now we need to understand what signals the remote is sending. So here's a really short program to start reading the remote, and it's based on the IR Remote Library, which gives you a few useful commands in the Arduino IDE. We start off by declaring our analog input pin as IR pin. Then we define the IR pin to the infrared receive command. Based on the analog inputs, we convert the signal to something we can use using the decode results command. In the setup section, We'll use the serial command to read the sensor and we'll activate the IR receiver using the enable switch. Now the loop is really basic. We simply ask that if the decode command gets a result, then print that result to the serial monitor as a decimal value. Remember? The numbers you learned in primary school. Then carry on checking the sensor. To see those results, click the Serial Monitor button in the Arduino IDE and a new window pops open. Now you can start pressing buttons on your infrared remote and you'll see numbers in the Serial Monitor. Each number matches one button press on the remote. Now I'm pressing the same button here and I'm getting two different numbers. Now that's perfectly normal, some remotes do this. Press different buttons and the same thing happens. Now let's try the number button. 1 gives us 1 and 2049. 3 gives us 3 and 2051. There's a pattern here. One number is 2048 higher than the other. Now let's confirm that. 9 gives us 9 and 2057. So if we press 0, we should get 0 and... 2048. Bingo! Now I've made a quick table in Excel and I've mapped out the results for each of the buttons on my remote and the two signals that it sends. For the train I'm just going to use five of these buttons up and down for speed, the power button and left and right for direction. Now here's the code that's going to get our motor running. We start off with our infrared remote library again, and we also quickly define those five values from our remote. Up, down, left, right, and power, plus the IR codes that match them. We also declare which analog pin we're going to use, and the results variable. I've also added a few more. Code value is going to decode the results value, while ENA value and ENA pre value will control the train's speed. I'll show you how those work in a second. The rest of the values are simple. The three motor control pins and a value to save the last command that we sent to the Arduino. The setup section is pretty short too. We set the motor control pins to output and we fix the starting direction of the train. For the train speed, this is where we tell the Arduino to use ENA value as the train speed. Now remember, that's a variable. We also activate the infrared receiver here. Our loop isn't that complex either. We check the infrared receiver and read its result as a variable called code value. Remember, for our particular remote, each button was sending out two different values, where one was 2048 higher than the other. 
So here's a quick fix to make sure we always use the higher number. Then we take that result and push it into another function called decode command, which is down here. Now the decode command function is a finite state machine, which we explained in the junctions tutorial. Basically, we switch between different states in the Arduino based on which infrared code we receive. Now our first state is called up, and it increases the motor speed by 10 each time it's pressed, up to a maximum speed of 255. The down case drops the speed by 10, so with these two cases we can really fine-tune the train's speed. The power case shuts off the train by setting ENA to 0, but it also saves the previous speed, so that when we press the power button again, the train will start up at its last known speed. That's cool, huh? The left and right cases are really simple. They just set the direction of the train by switching IN1 and 2 to high or low. We could even control this with one button if we wanted, using similar code to the power button, but I find it a bit crazy controlling the train this way. Clear back and forward buttons make the train much easier to drive. Back in the loop function, once we've set the state of the Arduino, we make any updates by writing the ENA value to the Arduino. Then we start reading the infrared sensor again over and over. You can expand this code however you like just by adding more cases to the state machine and defining those states at the top of the code. When you're ready to run, just compile it to your Arduino and set your train up. And here's our setup. There's the Arduino and the motor controller as always and our little IR sensor in the middle. So get your remote ready and get your train running. With this setup, you get a lot more control over the speed of your train and you don't have to sit right by the track to make everything work. The range depends entirely on which remote you use, and you can even use your TV and Hi-Fi remotes if you want to. Just make sure you have fresh batteries. Try it out for yourself, and if you like, try combining this with the tutorials on motorized points as well as the LCD screen for more playability. Thanks for watching.